Shout out to new Mondo crew member, Gohan Z9, and our server boosters for the Discord. There is a link for that below, by the way. X Angel X, and <laughs> drink sunshine. I appreciate you guys helping make this a better community. I also want to thank Amola Gabber for being a big contributing member to the Dragon Ball Colorist community, who is also responsible for coloring today's thumbnail, among many others. Looking on, even our Gohan baffles at this most recent revelation, believing Brawl to have supposed to have been a proud Saiyan, driven by independence, not a warrior who could be manipulated by some sorcerer. Relishing in her new strength, Brawl Piffs is actually quite the opposite. Before, she was way too human. All her life, her conscience had only held her back in fear of being judged, pushed to protect the worthless. But now, she's free, and all those tiresome and contradictory thoughts are gone. Her brother trembling, she's stronger than this, and it's in fact her best qualities the wizard has blocked, pleading she fight and resist. But she only scoffs. She is strong, more so than she's ever been. If they haven't noticed, she can now handle this form with ease, and it'll be a pleasure to test it out on the two of them. Universe 18's frozen in place, questioning the other if they're really going to fight her. Explaining, the Gohan familiar with this iteration of Brawl, utters, his sister has lost control of herself several times before, as her bloodline makes her very dangerous. But this is the first instance, they haven't had Vegito to contain her. Bobbity then commands her to kill them all, but not to forget to protect him too. Placing a shield around him, she assures her master, this will keep him safe while she's away. Astonished to see she's actually obeying him, that's something even Vegeta refused to do. Universe 16's Gohan accepts she truly is under his command, noting there has always been good and evil within her, but usually the good would win. But now Bobbity has removed that side of her, as Brawl is ready to get this started. But the Gohans have a trump card. Even though they may be completely outclassed in terms of strength, they'll be able to battle in perfect tandem with one another, without even having to communicate with each other. In an attempt to throw her off, the two of them shout to attack at the same time. But in reality, our Gohan knows he himself will fake his part, then go directly for Bobbity. As 16's Gohan will drive, with an ever so slight lead over his counterpart, handling Brawl himself, as he knows her fighting style better. Hating brothers, you better go all out or else. You're going to die even faster! <laughs> Was that supposed to hurt? Seriously? You're too weak. <laughs> Cell, you finally show your true colors! This is perfect! I'd have been disappointed if I didn't get the chance to fight you. Ugh. Regenerate this! Gohan isn't trying to fight. He reduced his energy to find Bobbity. No! And with that blast, not only is a large amount of the arena destroyed, but all the spectators are now dead. When Super Boo feels this is the perfect chance to taunt the Grand Supreme Kaioshin, mocking, isn't he the ultimate leader of the universe? Quipping, he's curious to see how he's going to save everyone now. 16's Gohan takes a lot of damage from the attack, and the Piccolos know it's actually both Gohans who are at the end of their rope, conspiring to regroup to get the both of them a Sensu Beam. In a bit of good news, Brawl herself has accidentally destroyed hers in her attempt to block Gohan. Damn! No more backup! You don't, don't want, want to, to fight! fight. But neither do I! Oh no! This is exactly what she did to that Ultra guy! Why? Obey me! Obey! I can't leave you for a second!
As savvy as anyone, Brawl's aware, only Cell and the two Gohans have the power to break through her master's protection. Scowling, she'll be watching him. Meanwhile, our Gohan tries to come up with a plan to get back to the arena, as it won't be long before he dies, not being able to breathe. Don't worry! Huh? When he hears a tiny voice coming from his hair. Cell, proving to grow more tactful by the day, got the idea after seeing Boo do something similar, deciding to create a few mini Cell Juniors. And lucky for them, he too can use instant transmission like his father, instructing Gohan to prepare his most powerful punch, and he'll put them in the perfect position. Our Piccolo notices, his universe's Gohan has vanished, so the other resolves to go after his own. When he appears right in front of him, another Cell Junior of course. But ever powerful, Brawl realizes what they're doing, even spotting their miniature helper. Chuckling, how cute! A support cell junior, as if that's going to change. Anything. While the surprise attack lands clean, Gohan shouts his support should have targeted Bobbity instead, who admits that would have been quite clever. As another makes his way to the unconscious Fat Boo, screaming in his ear to wake up, and pleading he assist in taking down some brawl. But the Majin is confused, believing to be on the same side as her. But the easily influenced creature is swayed immediately, as the Cell Jr. assures that's not the case at all, and for him to help quickly. Jumping up, he bellows all right, joining the action. Getting back to her feet, she growls her other brother is beginning to get on her nerves. <coughs> the Hell Lights appear, who slowly chip away at Bobbity's shield. Wondering how they're still alive, believing Cell killed him. The Biodroid grows a sinister grin. A few minutes ago, upon going to absorb Fipsil, it was actually just a ploy to speak with her without Bobbity hearing, commanding she respond with only her thoughts. Knowing she has nanobots healing her, and no serious wounds, he questions if she will be able to re-enter the battle anytime soon. She beckons why, their energy packs are empty either way. Cell asks if they can recharge them then, but unfortunately no, but they could take the packs from the defeated Ultras. He directs her to do so discreetly. Again, wanting to know why, he explains that he's escaped Bobbity's mental control, but for now, he's going to have to play his game, stating he's actually on their side, quipping he could have played less hard. She likes the plan, requesting he get them near her universe's area. And with that, he was one step closer to his revenge. Stepping in front of her master, Brawl now realizes, since the very beginning, Cell has been creating allies to retaliate against herself and Bobbity as the Piccolos, Gohans, Boo, Cell, and the Hellalites, not to mention the Cell Juniors, join forces in order to put an end to the chaos. As our group of heroes stares down the villain, they vanish, Nedwook exclaiming they ran off. But Piccolo believes Brawl merely knew she couldn't continue to protect Bobbity against all of them, confident she'll be back soon. Fipsil wanting to quickly come up with a plan of action, questioning what group strategies everyone has. But the awkward silence speaks for itself. Aside from multiform training and knowing how the other thinks, Gohan coyly admits they kind of just fight one on one. Piccolo adding, others usually watch or wait their turn, causing the Hell Light's faces to drop. Fairly questioning, how in the world have they managed to survive this long? Cell quipping, in their defense, usually only one of them at a time is relevant, or becomes relevant at the last minute still somehow sway to their side. Who questions his little manipulator, who he's supposed to fight, explaining it's that mean girl, Brawl, who captured his master. She's the one he must battle. Taking said master to space. Out here, only Brawl knows where he is, nonchalantly urging he give her a few seconds to smash him, and she'll be back for him. Oh, and breathing won't be a problem. He should have at least 10 minutes of oxygen inside this shield, begging her not to leave. She makes her way back to the others. Not a second time! Watching Cell, one of the Gohans notices he needs to attack almost as soon as Brawl disappears. If he finds her energy fast enough, she doesn't even get a chance. But counter to this, the villain notices they're adapting too quickly. Rushing to the downed Gohan, Piccolo realizes his spine has been broken. Noting aloud, Brawl is aiming to kill, but able to eat the Senzu. There may be hope for our heroes after all.